Now let us see the enthalpy change of a reaction. We call it delta RH0. The R written in the subscript indicates that it's the enthalpy change during a reaction or a, of a reaction. Now what is this delta RH is? It is the energy exchange or energy change accompanying any reaction is called enthalpy change of a reaction. So whatever the amount of heat energy is being lost or is being gained by that particular reaction or during that process, we call it the enthalpy change of a reaction. If it is calculated under standard conditions of temperature and pressure, we call it the standard enthalpy of reaction. See, uh, we call it standard enthalpy of reaction if it is carried out it is what is most important it is the energy change which accompanies a reaction in which all the reactants are or the reactants the products are present in their standard state standard state is it's the at standard state is at any temperature when substance is very stable and pure at one bar pressure condition. So the temperature standard can be can vary from one substance to the other because that's a, that particular all, all substances cannot be sta very stable they cannot be very very pure at a particular at, at, at the same temperature. But we usually express this data at 298 Kelvin, that's most important. But what is more important to note here is this, that the standard temperature can vary, but yes, the pressure always is one bar pressure. Now, we call, that is why to indicate the standard condition, we put a naught above this H, which indicates that it is the standard enthalpy of a reaction. Now, uh, we need to know this standard enthalpy of reaction during phase transformations. The first thing we need to know is, during any process of any reaction, whatever the amount of heat is being lost or accepted, that's the enthalpy of the reaction. Now we name those enthalpies of reactions according to what is happening in the reaction. If suppose the phase transformations are taking place, we'll name the enthalpy of a reaction according to the phase which is being, uh, whatever the phase transformation is taking place. Let us see the first, we call it enthalpy of vaporization. So it's for vaporization. And how we define it? It's the enthalpy change when one mole of a solid liquid substance changes to its vapor state at its what boiling point. So it's liquid water, let's take an example, is changing into what uh, its gaseous state. So this, but whatever the amount of energy is being used for this changing one mole of this into one mole of this, we'll call it enthalpy of vaporization. The symbol is delta VAP H0 and we usually express this in kilojoule per mole. Similarly, we can have enthalpy of fusion. As the name indicates, it's, the, it's during the melting process. When one mole of solid substance changes to its liquid state at its melting point. Similarly, we have enthalpy of sublimation it's the energy required or energy exchange when one mole of a solid changes to its gaseous state at this at a particular temperature so this is how we have different types of enthalpies during the phase transformations but the most important enthalpy we have is the enthal enthalpy of formation. We have delta FH0 which is called enthalpy of formation. This standard enthalpy of formation is defined as the enthalpy change or amount of energy released or absorbed when one mole of a substance is formed from its constituting elements present in their natural state. So if suppose we are we are trying to find out CO2's, the CO2's formation, we must know that from where the CO we are getting the CO2 gas. The CO2 gas is obtained when carbon solid in the form of a graphite is being actually combusted with oxygen. 
So in this reaction, the CO2 is formed from its constituting elements which are taken in the pure state. Now in this process or in this reaction, whatever the enthalpy change we are having is called enthalpy of formation of carbon dioxide. If suppose, and now in this case, this carbon has to be graphite because that's its most stable state. If we have taken this carbon in the form of a diamond and O2 gas, and then we would have got CO2. Remember, this enthalpy change during this process will not be called enthalpy of formation of CO2. Why? Because the elements from which the CO2 is being formed are not taken in their standard states. Because out of diamond and graphite, we know graphite is more stable. So energy is, is required actually to transform graphite into diamond. So the, whatever the amount of energy is being released or absorbed in this process, that will not be a true exact value of formation of one mole of CO2. We also call it a molar enthalpy of formation because it is usually expressed that is the amount of energy released or absorbed when one mole of a substance is formed from its constituting elements present or taken in a standard state. So that's the most important uh, enthalpy. And from here we start because we realize that we... Uh, we have to start this calculation of the uh, amount of energy released or absorbed for any reactions for all the processes. And from, from, from for that, we need to have the data of the enthalpies of the different substances. So we have prepared the data of the enthalpies of different substances in the form, in the form of their enthalpies of formation with the uh, very clear uh, assumptions that the enthalpies of formation of elements in their pure state is taken as zero. So this is how we have started it. The molar enthalpies of a reaction can, are, are actually are determined by using a simple relationship that it is always is equal to summation of enthalpies of formation of products minus summation of enthalpies of formation of reactants. So by this simple formula, we can easily find out that how much is the amount of enthalpy, molar enthalpy change which is taking place during any process or any reaction. And it is actually is always is determined from the data of the enthalpies of formation of the reactants and the products by using this simple formula. Now let us see in the thermochemical equations, we use this data or we use this formula. Let us see a thermochemical equation like let's take an example of uh, uh, the reaction of nitrogen gas with hydrogen gas leading to the formation of ammonia gas. If we balance this, it is one mole of nitrogen combining with three moles of hydrogen giving you two moles of ammonia. Though we know that in this case ammonia is being prepared, ammonia is being is actually is being getting formed in this reaction. Definitely the enthalpy change in this reaction or for this reaction is will be called enthalpy of formation of ammonia. Now how we can find out this, this enthalpy of reaction? Remember, we can find out from the enthalpy of reaction. Huh? This enthalpy of reaction will be equal to what? Enthalpy of formation of uh, the products minus enthalpies of formation of reactants. Now in this case, remember, usually the enthalpies of formation of uh, data is given because it's the molar enthalpy of formation in given, is given in terms of the number of moles. So we have to make this very clear that if we are trying to find out the enthalpy of this reaction particularly, so we, and the data is given for ammonia as per mole, for hydrogen per mole and for nitrogen per mole. We need to multiply this by 2 and this by 3 and this by 4. Let, let me give you an example that if the suppose the enthalpies of formation of nitrogen is X, hydrogen is Y and ammonia is Z. So how, what we will do is we will do that the 2 it is actually is 2Z. So twice of Z will give us the what the 2 moles of ammonia being formed minus x plus thrice of y. This is going to give us what the enthalpy change during the action. But remember this is, this will be the enthalpy change or enthalpy of the reaction but it will not be for one per mole because 
to, in order to find out per mole of ammonia, we need to divide that data by 2. So this is what usually we need to keep in our mind before doing into this, before taking these all sort of definitions and terms and moving into the numericals of thermodynamics and thermochemical equations. That the data is given is in, in terms of per mole and what exactly we need to have to find out in, in, in any particular thermochemical equation.